What the Tech is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, and now an online store. Check out the new commerce solution so you can get started selling your stuff immediately. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on a new account, go to squarespace.com slash what the tech and use offer code what the tech for. Audible.com, the internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash Andrew. Hey everybody, welcome to What The Tech. I'm Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by my very lovely sidekick, Paul Thorat. How you doing, Paul? Good. How are you? Look at that. You're, you're, you look great. <laughs> I feel great. Look at that camera. If by great, you mean terrible. All 1080p of you is coming in nice and clear. I got to really do something about my office. Why? You want to redo it? Well, I want it to look better behind me. Just pull up a green screen. I know. That's what I need. You can have like the Mac campus behind you. Right. Broadcasting live from Palo Alto. It'll be beautiful. Um, (laughs) Cupertino. I should say Cupertino. Sorry. People are going to get upset. This is What the Tech, and we are recording live on a Friday. Paul was uh, away again. He he does these crazy trips, and then he comes back, and he sleeps all day on Friday, and then he (laughs) wakes up. He's in a really bad mood like a bear. (laughs) Yeah, and then he's in an awful Why are you hitting me with a stick? And then I have to tiptoe around stories. Uh, but we're recording live on Friday uh, at 4 p.m. If you're uh, listening to the podcast, it doesn't matter because we're, we're brand new to you. So, Paul, how was your trip this week? I have no idea. You don't remember any of it? <laughs> I think it was pretty good. It was short. Uh, so what were you away for this time? I went to participate in another. It actually, it was a lot like the last trip. So. I went and participated in what is basically a live webcast, uh, this time for the Office guys. They do a, a great video series called Office Garage. Oh, very uh, cool. Teaching IT pros um, about all the new stuff in Office 2013 and the new Office 365, that kind of thing. So, um, Yeah, so you went last time, now you're back, now, now you're done, right? You're, you're finished. <laughs> Forever. Forever, you're well, never going back again. Let, let, me, let me apprise you to my schedule. <laughs> so... No, I'm 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 going to be in Fort Collins, Colorado, in later this month, but that won't impact us. And then I'm going to be in Microsoft again in May, and that may impact us. And then in June, I have at least two trips. I have to go to Tech Ed in New Orleans, and then um, what's the other one? Oh, Build in San Francisco. I'm going to be. I guess I'll tell you when I'm going to be away. I'm going to be away on the 23rd. I'm going to be in Los Angeles, but I'll be doing it from a studio there. Is this like a NAB or something? Or no. No, I'm not going to NAB. I, I'm just, I'm just totally ignoring the entire event that I should be at, mm-hmm. and I'm going on vacation to Los Angeles. <laughs> See, this the week is why after. we hooked up. Yeah, it's your dedication to the craft. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I'll talk a big game, and then it's like, hey, are you going to NAB? Because this is where everybody in the industry is going, and, like, and you oh, should be there. Is that, is that this week? I'm like, oh no, no, I don't, I don't go to those things. <laughs> you know what? I do not go to conventions, and I'll tell you why. Every year we we did Blog World here whenever when it was in New York. And I would get the worst, the worst illness for two weeks. Right, right. I mean, I really thought I had some sort of bacterial infection that was going to kill me. It's called Las Vegas itis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's like the con, the con flu, and it's the worst yeah. thing in the world. So I, I choose not to participate if I if I can to uh, all these events. But Paul, I have a I have a couple things to talk to you about today. Okay. Uh, one, while you were away, I seem <laughs> to sounded have, very serious. Like it's very. Uh, serious. We have a couple of issues I need to. We discuss. do actually. Uh, you're going to think I lost my mind while you were away, and this is what happens when Paul goes away. I start thinking, and I end up saying things like, "I really love the BlackBerry Z10." Right. And I got a BlackBerry Z10 here, and I've been using it exclusively the entire week, and I really like it. So you don't uh, feel like an ostracized leper of some kind? Um, yeah, I thought I would. I, I, don't, I honestly thought I would feel really weird. <laughs> do you, do you ever this. get this conversation where people are like, oh, is that the new iPhone? Oh. It does look oh. a lot like an iPhone. 
yeah. and it feels like an iPhone. Uh, mm -hmm. It kind of resembles an iPhone, but it feels like a refined. In a weird way, I feel like because like because I'm coming from Android, mm -hmm. this feels so complete. If that makes any sense, as far as the, I'm not talking about apps, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about the actual functionality of the operating yeah, system. I, I it feels you. complete. In other words, Android has, depending on what you're looking at, has a sort of disconnected, yeah, not yeah, not cohesive UI. I'm 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 telling you, I really like the phone, and I'm very impressed. The the biggest damn full of this thing, the battery life, I thought it would be far worse from all the reviews that I read. Not mm -hmm. bad at all. I'm getting almost an entire day. Yep. And the the thing that's awful is the app store. There's virtually nothing. I mean, there's really, really no apps. I tried to do a speed test on this thing yep. to see what I was getting with AT and T for uh, LTE, and there's no speed test app. I mean, so. Simple thing. Oh, you can't do it on the web? Uh, you could do it on the web. I ended up doing it on the web, and I got uh, 29 megabits down, and I got about another like 15 up, which is phenomenal. Yep. Um, I, I, I don't know why... It, I don't know why it's getting so much negative press from people, from all the bloggers saying the battery life is awful. It's not. It's, <laughs> well, it's a version 1.0 device. I, I yeah. it, It's really good. Interesting. I can't see. I, I've been I've been trying to find bad things other than the App Store, uh, this and is I can't the find it. I had to Windows Phone when it first came out. Why are people saying this is bad? Same. Well, it's exactly the same. Like this is really good, really cohesive experiences. Could use some more apps. <laughs> you know, so the most um, impressive. Although, thing. I, like as we've discussed, though, I'm not. I, I, mean, I feel like I'm the only person out in the world in this shouting this occasionally, but I'm really not positive the app thing is such a huge, huge deal. Uh, assuming I, everything else, all the built-in stuff is there, you know, assuming the, the basics are all there. I mean, I kind of feel like it has to be there now to kind of compete because I'm trying to find the picture I took of mm -hmm. with the camera. But I feel like when it comes to the apps, you have to have the standards at least. Like when I feel like with Windows Phone, no matter how many times people say, well, the app store isn't developed enough, the standards are all there plus more. Right. There, you The standards are missing with, blackberry and that's a problem yeah, and i'm not talking yeah. about a facebook app i'm not talking about twitter i'm not talking about you know like instagram for example is missing okay fine it's not developed for it yet but a lot of you know tune in is there but a lot of the other podcasting apps aren't uh there's no speed test app which to me seems yeah, like a standard i guess but how do you i mean is this something you really run a lot as a normal person i mean no, I I mean Yeah, no, I don't know either. I, it was I'm, almost like it was almost like every time I looked for something, it was missing. Sure. And I felt a little annoyed. I'm like, wow, you know, th this is not that great because every time I'm looking for some sort of app, even like like a like a ripoff of it does not exist. Right. Uh one thing that I have to I'm really amazed by is the camera. The camera is phenomenal. Hmm. Probably the best That's camera true. I've I ever used. <clears throat> really? Other than the iPhone five, I actually have I'm a sure screenshot. I've never heard anyone call out the camera. Uh, here's a screenshot if you want to see. That is a that's a picture I took with it. It looks yeah. really good. Oh, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. What this is a Z10, right? The that's Z10, the name. yeah, the BlackBerry Z10. Um, I, I was very impressed, and I I really really hope they this sells and it does really good, better than the nine twenty. I'll tell you that because people are asking in the chat. Much better than the 920. The camera quality. The camera quality, yeah. So those yeah. are fighting words. I, I, I used the 920. <laughs> I, I had the 920 and I really I, I really liked it. But if I were to put yeah. these two up no, against I, each I, other I, right I, now, if I were to say the – if I was going to say the 920 and this, mm. um, it would be really tough right now for me to pick one because the App Store is so underdeveloped for this thing that I don't – think i could give it to blackberry yet right um if if it wasn't for that like let's say the app store was really developed i it would be very difficult for me to say which one interesting i, I don't know maybe maybe it's just me because i've told this to a couple people and people are like are you insane this is not a good phone and and i and i don't know maybe i've just been with android for so long that i'm like wow this is what a good os is like yeah 
but I hope it does well. Like. I hope it does well. And this is a version 1.0 device, you know, so the next version is going to be even better than this. The way you're describing this, I, I feel like I'm looking at myself talking about Windows Phone, and I have to say it's a little disconcerting. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I know. Well, that's I know. interesting. That's interesting. Uh, low light, it does really well also. But it is doing some manipulation with the photo. I think there's a lot of software that goes into mm -hmm. how well the camera, how, how good the photos are coming out. Because when you take the photo and it shows you like the sample image, it is different than what's saving. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. So by the way, the, the Windows phone does the same thing. Okay, so what is it doing? I'm not, I'm, I'm not too sure exactly. The what processing? What? Yeah, I have no idea. Um, I, I, I've noticed this exact thing. Yep. Okay, so um, I'm not crazy when I make that up. But yep. I, I'm very impressed, Paul. I am very, very impressed with the camera. Very impressed. Yeah, as you said that, I'm just I'm looking at myself in this video we have, and I look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what video is this? Our video. I mean, look, I look washed out. Look, I, no, I look like fine. a Civil War photo photograph. You look so nice. It, but look at you. If we go flashback to you. Look how colorful you are. I'm, I'm very. I think it's my swarthy am, skin tone. No, it's the whole scene though is like colorful and bright and clean. I, can, I look I like. Can, do, uh, do I have like um, you know, like a gelatin covering it or something? It's got kind of a weird. It's it does. Got a weird color cast. It's okay. You look nice. You look pretty. I'm sure everybody will be okay with it. Thank you. I feel pretty. <laughs> I have a so, new webcam. That's the problem. I know. You, it's nice. Look at that. Look how cl crystal clear right, your glasses. All right. All right. All uh, right. But uh, so far, after using this for about a week, I have to yeah. say, uh, very impressed by it. And I'm sure I'll grow to hate it more and more. As is I it a grid of it. icons I see on the screen? It is a grid of icons. And the other thing that you really freaked me out for the first day or two, that there's no back button. Yes. There's so, no button at all, right? There's no no button at all. Button. So you got to do this weird yeah. swipe up thing to go yeah. back, and it pulls up, you know, uh, whatever applications you're running, plus it your you know last yeah, application you, know you were running you here. Get used to that. It, it, most people don't switch phone phone. No. You know, so someone would buy this, and I'm sure they have a little demo video or whatever in the beginning, and then you, just, you get used to it. Yeah. So um, you know, I like it. So far, and I'm going to be doing a, a far more detailed review, on, obviously, when I when I use it some more and, and I start, like, you know, getting real feelings about it. But, Paul, <laughs> do you think I'm insane at this point for, for liking no, it? No, I, I, so, by the way, I've never seen one. So I, I, I have really nothing to offer as far as uh, any kind of hands-on thing. But, no, I mean, like I said, I, the, the thing that I'm getting from this is you clearly feel really strongly about this and it like like i said it's kind of a weird out of body experience like i feel like this is how i came off when i talked about windows phone when it first came out and i was confused that no one else got it <laughs> yeah and <laughs> listen know? i'm not i'm not a blackberry uh, fan i mean I've, I've this is actually the first blackberry i've ever had in my hands i i've never used a blackberry yes. prior to this so i'm not i've never been impressed with the blackberries i've used i mean ever no i never got it i never never got the whole blackberry thing um, did you ever have one? No, I never owned one, but I've used them. So what were you using? A Trio prior to you know the whole iPhone thing? No, no. So uh, before the iPhone, I had a... <clears throat> did I have? I probably had like a, a Motorola... What was that thing called? Um, Q? Uh, the you Windows? Know, like Windows the Windows Mobile. Windows Mobile. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, <laughs> listen. I'm still... <laughs> I'm sorry about block, that. Still trying to block that one out. Yeah. So I just want to talk about that to start things off and to kind of get it out of the way uh, because I really like the phone and, and I'm, I'm really I, no, happy I how it you. is. I, 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 this, it doesn't shock me, but I mean, you know, the central problem with the BlackBerry is the same as with Windows Phone and it's, it's interesting how you feel as strongly about it as I, I you know, do about Windows Phone and that it almost doesn't matter how good it is if nobody else buys, buys it. <laughs> you I mean, know, I mean, so... But they do have an advantage here. I mean, they could really, really target enterprise and do well with enterprise because the people that I know that have been using you know what, this. Though? They had a window there for that. And there was a several year period when iPhone was first coming out. Well, iPhone's only been out for several years, but where people would say, you know, yep, love the iPhone, um, would prefer to have the iPhone. We have to have BlackBerry. It, it has this corporate stuff that we really need yeah. the security, their network, whatever. Um, 
You know, unfortunately, RIM and uh, BlackBerry move so slow that these organizations, and this is true whether you're talking about government, uh, corp- you know, big corporations, the military, whatever, they're all going to iPhone, you know, yeah. and Android too. And, you know, this is why Samsung is doing a special uh, encryption slash security deal in their phones. And, and I just feel like their window kind of closed. I mean, that was something that Microsoft never really had with Windows Phone because there wasn't any built-in market for Windows Mobile. No one really cared about that. I think, I, I mean, the whole concept of taking, win, uh, the whole thing with Windows Mobile was that it was the pocket PC and, and it was yeah. primarily based on you take Windows and you shrink it and here it is. Well, this this is the what Google does with everything today. It's, you yeah. know, when you're, a ha- when you're a hammer, everything's a nail. So yeah. in, in back in the day when PCs were it, uh, that's it was Microsoft's approach. You know, we, we make really successful PC stuff. Hey, Paul, I want to continue this conversation because um, we all here are fans of Windows Mobile. It's a fact. Everybody in our chat room is a <laughs> huge. There? Everybody in our chat room is a huge Windows Mobile fan. I personally, oh. I love the uh, the HTC Touch Pro that Verizon put out. Uh, that they crippled the phone and uh, they made the Windows Mobile experience even worse. But before right, well, we can, you, before you we can, can thank those guys for Windows yeah. Phone. That's why yeah. they didn't allow that anymore. But before we continue, I want to talk about our sponsor, and that's Squarespace. Fast and easy ways to put out a high-quality blog, portfolio, and now e-commerce store. Now, this is amazing with Squarespace. Uh, Chauncey Hayden, which does a show here on the GFK Network, you may know him from the Howard Stern Show. He's also a photographer, and he asked me to make a website for him, and I really didn't want to do it. I didn't want to deal with WordPress. It's simple, but it's still work. Um, And I needed something that will be across all platforms and will work across all platforms. So I started looking into Squarespace right before they came on board as an advertiser. And I I sent them a link. I'm like, hey, listen, what do you think of this? And I gave him some ideas. And he absolutely loved the idea that he could go in, manage it easily. I mean, without having to, you know, do complicated uh, editing and CSS stuff. Um, I set it up for him. And we're going to launch it in about a week. And I'm going to actually show it on the site. Uh, He's a photographer. So it's a giant portfolio of all the photographs he's taken over the last 20 years, spanning from Madonna to uh, uh, Tupac to, I mean, all these uh, unbelievable, unbelievable, you know, celebrities uh, that we know of uh, today. And we're going to put it out and I'm going to put it on the show so everybody could see. But you get started with a Squarespace site, too, by going to squarespace.com forward slash what the tech. And if, when you use offer code what the tech for, you get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on a new account with Squarespace. So they make it very easy for you to sign up. Uh, if you want to create an online store, I honestly would recommend Squarespace because e-commerce is a mess. It's very expensive, costing you anywhere from you know five thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars to create a website. With Squarespace, you could do it easily yourself. They're able to do physical goods and digital goods like MP3s and and ebooks and photos. And I believe it starts at around 24 bucks a month for an e-commerce store, which is quite affordable. Squarespace.com slash what the tech for uh, slash what the tech, I should say. And if you use offer code what the tech for, you get 10% off uh, on your first purchase. And I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring the show. I'll tell you, um, I mean, we're not doing it yet now, but it is so easy to create a website with them. It's almost scary how far we've gotten with this. Beats the whole, you know, Angel Fire and GeoCity. Jeez. That uh, that we were plagued with for years. You know what I'm going to do? Do you think they would get upset if I did a live read for Squarespace and I created a replica of what a GeoCity site would look like <laughs> with the dancing Spider-Man and everything? That's actually, GeoCities is probably a theme. <laughs> you know? I wonder if I could do that. You know what? I'm going to do that for next week. I'm going to create a exact replica of what a website should, in 1996 would look like. Create a BlackBerry fan page. <laughs> That's it, yeah. You, yeah. you know what it would be? It would be his twirling cell phone and right. Spider-Man just doing like a dance. <laughs> no, it's that little um, uh, under construction animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the little uh, the banana, the dancing banana thing. <laughs> Let me see if I can find one. GeoCity website. So, Paul, I want to um, yes. get into a couple of things with you to uh, take, take this show to a serious uh, turn. Um, oh. What do you think of the what do you think of the Facebook announcement? This Facebook home? Yeah. I really, I was, I actually, and, and I'm not saying this to make a joke. I was really hoping to get your opinion on this because I, I, I did not understand. I, at first, I was trying to grasp the idea of who would use this, 
mm-hmm. and I still don't understand why right. and who would use this. Well, I feel like we talked about this sort of a week or two ago um, in the sense that I, I do feel like there is a pretty large community of people who spend a lot of time on their phones taking pictures they're then going to post to Facebook or looking at Facebook and interacting with people through Facebook. So um, obviously the people who listen to this podcast probably are going to react and recoil in horror mm-hmm. at the notion of a um, – like a Facebook phone, you know, but we were, you know, the thing that we talked about was this notion that, you know, today we have these grids of icons and things. And when you look at something like Google now or now Facebook home, you have this thing that I think actually does make a lot of sense for a lot of people. And you can still launch those apps, you know, yeah. if, if that's what you want to do. So uh, I guess it depends, you know, on, on where you're at. I, I was trying to think, you know, through how I spend time on my own phone. I wish you could track this, you know, it'd be really interesting. I do spend a lot of time, on Facebook, if you will, when I'm out in the world with my phone, you know, so I went on a trip this week or if I go out, you know, the weekend comes, we go out to dinner or something and, you know, people take pictures of food, they take pictures of their friends, they check in to places and then they catch up with people uh, as well. And, um, I mean, I guess that's what most people are doing on their phones, right? I mean, a lot of people are on Facebook, but is this the right direction for Android? I mean, this this is the. Uh, I well, mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. So this is what we discussed last week. <laughs> There's no direction for Android. Android. <laughs> Android it's is a free for all. Total free for all. Explosion. Yeah, exactly. So this is one direction for Android, and this is because of the open nature of Android that this is what happens, and this is the dual edged sword of their decision to be completely open. That, but in order to be competitive, to be- right? In order to be competitive in the Android market, to kind of yeah. separate yourself from every other phone out there. It might you, be necessary you just to do this. HTC on Windows Phone. Yeah, this is exactly that. So different companies. In other words, uh, HTC. I think very telling that they were there as part of this announcement. HTC is a company that is not doing so well right now. Um, they are suffering big time. A lot of people talk about Samsung versus Apple because they're the, the two eight hundred pound gorillas. But r- the reality is, there's a lot of other companies in this market that are making Android phones just like Samsung. That aren't doing so well, you know, HTC, Motorola, whatever. And uh, this is an a, this is a place where they can differentiate um, a little bit. Not not because they're the only ones that can get it, but you know, they feel probably like if they can go out V1, have this thing by default right away, yeah. have partnerships with AT and T and so forth, they can get some traction. That some people will buy this phone because it's the the Facebook phone, so to speak. I mean, uh, it's not so. necessarily an awful idea. And at first, I'm thinking, I'm like, ah, I would not use this. But then I'm thinking, I'm like, well, this may be what every one of these manufacturers have to do. Samsung has their UI. HTC has mm-hmm. their UI. Uh, LG will have theirs. And they'll all be Android, but they'll all have a very unique feel and look to it. You know, it's funny. I, I, <laughs> it just reminded me. I, I need to look at this again. On, on Windows Phone 8, one of the things you can do is they have um, uh, dynamic lock screens. And you can have apps that write to the lock screen. So uh, one of the apps that can do this is Bing. And that's what I use. And so every day when you look at your phone, you have like a new image on your lock screen. But one of the apps you can also go to is Facebook, right? And so you can set Facebook up as your lock screen app. And what that means is that when you pick up your phone and look at it for the first time, the, the stuff that's on there is coming from Facebook. And the one thing that I will notice immediately whenever it kind of kicks in eventually is that the people I know on Facebook don't take pictures that are as nice looking as the ones that Facebook showed, right? Mm-hmm. So Facebook had these these perfectly beautiful and Amazing. centered photos or you know framed photos um, taken by professionals as if that's what you see on Facebook. But what I see on Facebook is a tiny dog with a party hat on his head, <laughs> um, the, like stupid pictures of people's cats or pictures of people's kids. And it's, it's kind of a different experience, you know what I mean, than what they were showing. And I think that's part of the problem that, yeah. you know, in, in a perfect world, this kind of integration sounds great. And I think, a lot, for, again, for a lot of people, they're going to love it. But, you know, the truth is people put crazy stuff on Facebook. I mean... So, I mean, I every time know. every time someone crops a picture of George Bush and you know does something weird with yeah. it, that's going to show yeah, up yeah, on yeah, your yeah. on your thing. I I I don't know. You know, I I kind of wanted to beat up on this a little bit, and now the more I think about it, I'm thinking this is the perfect a- approach that all these companies need to take. Because my biggest complaint with Android, and every time I do a review of an Android phone, is that it feels exactly like my two year old Android phone. 
And my two-year-old Android phone feels exactly like, you know, every Android phone that I've had, some are better, some are worse, but not by much. The entire experience yeah. is the same. I've had this I've, I've had this exact observation. A friend of mine had a, an Android phone a while back now, and I looked at it, and I said, what is this thing? And he said, it's a Galaxy something. And I said, Galaxy what? You know, what? And we figured out it was a Galaxy S2. You know, it's kind of an old phone now yeah. in a way. But it looked... I'm like, this looks really clean. It's It doesn't look old-fashioned I mean, almost, you know? Rumors were coming out this week that the next iPhone UI, the iPhone, I guess iOS 7, will yeah. have an updated look to it. Yeah. And I was thinking, I'm like, they have to. They have to do this because, uh, you know, Windows Phone is totally... Let's, let's take them out of the equation because they are totally doing something different than everybody else and they're not doing this grid... UI, you know, not you don't have a bunch of icons everywhere. They're doing something so dramatically different from everybody else that I'm not I'm not going to compare them to this. But when you take when you take an Android phone, you take a BlackBerry phone, and now you take an iPhone, it's nearly the same exact look. Everything. I mean, it it, it looks the same. If if someone told me that the BlackBerry UI was you know uh, Android plus a skin. Oh, I would probably because you're waving you. that around. It's not clear what OS that is at all. Yeah, I mean, uh, here, let me. I'm gonna do a perfect comparison here. Um, after I praised the phone, now I'm gonna say. Yeah, but, how, why, but is that I terrible? Know. I mean, I, I I think some familiarity helps. You know, <clears throat> it's exactly sure. the same. Well, I mean, but Windows and Mac OS 10 look similar, right? I mean, and it's not just because there's only a certain ways to do things. It's I, it, honestly, I think in some ways it's like you know. We could have made Mac OS X radically different, but we want people to come here from Windows and for them to be able to adjust. Uh, yeah, adjust very quickly. Yeah, so I mean, you have to think that's part of it. Do you think this phone is actually going to sell? You know, let's say HTC, or do you? Uh, I know they said they're going to roll it out to some phones. I think Galaxy S three is one of them, and there was a couple other uh, phones they're going to roll yeah. out this Facebook thing for, but. No, I don't. I, to be honest, no, I don't. I mean, I feel like initially think, everybody's going to download it and nobody's going to use yeah, it. Yeah. Well, I think uh, people will download it and some people will use it. Um, I would love to see uh, what yeah. it will be like, you know, three months from now. How many people are actually using it three months from now? They went, they went less far. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> I'm working on like 2,000 hours of sleep here. Um I expected them to do more. I, I expected them literally to have a Facebook branded phone. And, and to be honest, I think that that device could have sold well. But I think what's missing is the pervasive experiences across the device that would have made that really, really cool. So this is kind of like a V1. And you might go back in time and think to when um, Apple did a deal with Motorola, right? And they had a, a Razor phone that was kind of a constrained iTunes device. And uh, and then eventually they did the iPhone, you know. And so yeah. I, I think eventually Facebook's going to have a Facebook phone. And so this is the first step. This is how you do it. Well, the first step actually is the apps. And you saw them. They they don't just have a Facebook app. They have a bunch of apps. And and then they, um, sorry, Rocker phone, not Razor. I, I guess I said Razor. Um, you know, now they have a partnership with a hardware maker and a partnership with wireless carriers. And the next step will be a phone. You know, an actual and, phone. And do you think it's going to be like a, HTC a making it? Is it going to be like the HTC Facebook phone? I don't think HTC is going to be around <laughs> by the time that happens, but, you know, we'll see. Wasn't HTC, and, and I could be wrong, but wasn't HTC one of those companies that made the phones for other companies, but they didn't brand it yeah, as themselves? Sure. Yeah, I don't know. I, have, I, I could have swore that's what they did years ago, and then they came out, you know, with HTC phones. Yeah, I'm not positive. It could be. Its entire bubble is going to explode. I mean, it's going to be Samsung, Apple, and whoever. You know, yeah. it, there's way too many phones on the market Nokia. right now. <laughs> Nokia, yeah. Listen, I, I I hope. I really hope. <laughs> I do. Too. Um, I want to talk about the iPad, and mm -hmm. it's it it was its third. It, it turned three, I believe, a couple days ago. And how do we how do we even measure this really? And I was one of the people that said this is the dumbest thing in the world. Why would you want this? Uh, it's a giant iPhone. Yeah, I said uh, the same thing. And and it's going to be the dumbest thing ever. And boy, was I wrong because I absolutely love the iPad. I think it's, in my opinion, I think it was one of the. See, I don't actually care for the iPad. You don't. Um, no, but that that's not the point. Okay, so the I'm going to say I thought what I'm going to say may not apply to you and me. 
But yeah. I do feel like this was one of the largest leaps computing took in many, many years. Well, okay. So, <laughs> and I'll tell a, you I why. Mean, I'll tell well, you why. Okay. Yep. I feel like the average person now could use a computer without screwing up. Okay. That's fair. That, that is fair. Yeah. That computers had gotten too complex and no one had done anything about it. I, right. So I think that the, the fundamental, um, misconception about the iPad when it came out that I had, and I guess you had as well, was that, um, we looked at it and said, this is a big iPhone. So what, you know, whereas I think from Apple's perspective, they had created the iPhone, obviously, and realized how exciting this could be on a bigger device. And they had a choice to make, and they could have made, <clears throat> they could have said, let's bring the touch the sim simplicity stuff to Mac OS X, which, by the way, is how Microsoft would have and, and did mm -hmm. do it. Or let's make a new device, you know. And, it honestly, and that's what it they would, did. It would not have been successful at all, in my opinion, if they brought it to OS X. Right, but that's I mean, what I mean. It was yeah. a good decision. Like, uh, you know, that was the, the fundamental innovation of this. I mean, I spent a lot of time, you know, 10, 15 years ago arguing that, you know, people look at innovation the wrong way, that it is in its own way innovative to bring something wonderful to a volume of people, which was sort of the, uh, the catalyst for Microsoft's success, you know, over the PC era. You know, Apple did the same thing with the iPad, you know, that they could have had they could have added multi-touch capabilities uh, to the Mac, but that would have impacted nobody. You know, by doing it on the iPad, uh, they kind of flew in the face of what I think a lot of people would have. It done. might have been, it might have been great for the five percent that are actually using it. No, but that's what I mean. It, yeah. it, doesn't, does, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that would have mattered. Um, and so that's very interesting. I mean, you know, uh, the iPad. It's, in some ways, it gets a little too much credit in, in some quarters. I mean. You know, the first iPad was not a, a computer in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a consumption device. And that really bothered Steve Jobs. And so for version 2, because it was an accurate complaint, you know, they came out with the iWork apps um, just to say, hey, look, you, you know, you can, you can do work on this thing. Um, the truth is, when it comes to interacting with computing devices, most people aren't working most of the time, you know. I mean, I spend a lot of time on a computer writing, but I'm, that's, I mean, how many people do that? That's not very common. Um, so people out in the world with their own devices, people at home with their own devices, they're not sitting there typing, you know, for most, most of the time. And it, it, it's, it's tough because we, in the PC industry, that's, the, <laughs> that's our background. That's mm -hmm. where we came from. And it's, it's hard to chop, kind of lop off that thing that is the, the biggest part of the interface in some ways, you know. And, and again, I, I, you know, that's part of the, the innovation that was the i the iPad, seeing the important part where other people would have seen it as something else. My biggest mm -hmm. thing was with the iPad. I'm like, okay, so how am I going to access files on this? Where's the file management system? That's the that's what I mean. It's the old and, way of thinking. And and like, it's breaking out of those. And I couldn't I couldn't grasp it. I really couldn't. I'm like, okay, so what am I going to do? Let's say I want to transfer a file. Remember the USB thing was a big deal, right? Has no USB. What are we going to do? Uh, what am I, how am I going to access files if I'm writing blogs or if I'm writing news, whatever? Um, how am I going to store this if there's no file management system? And you know what? Yeah. I don't think anybody in 2013 is complaining about a file management system on an iPad. No, but it, you know, it takes some time. I, uh, listen, I've had these like mini epiphanies with you know, um, uh, my wife's parents, for example, or whatever, where you hear normal people talk about some computing task as if it were just normal. You know, like I got to... I got to run defrag in my hard drive and, you know, my computer's <laughs> been running a little slow. And, you know, it's sad. It's, it's, yeah. it's sad that normal people have ever been inflicted with this kind of baloney. I never want know? to hear the word format come out of my mother-in-law's yeah. mouth. Yeah. We got a format. It's time right. again. And so I think that's the thing. Now, that said, I mean, uh, you know, unfortunately for Apple, the reality of the iPad is going to be that, you know, they're, they'll always own some portion of this market. But as they did with like GUIs or whatever. I mean, eventually it commoditizes and other people come in, in this case, Android. And, um, you know, we look down the, uh, down the next couple of years and things change a little bit and so forth. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's such a shining moment of just getting it right and, you know, evolving it over time. So it becomes even more right, obviously, but, um, 
I, I think it came out at the right time. I mean, if you think about it, you know, an entry yeah. level four hundred dollar computer at that point. Yeah, your options were a re- really, you know, lower end fifteen inch laptop or a netbook. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and, and there'll always be people who will argue. Well, I want the netbook because you know it has that micro SD or SD card, and I have USB ports, and I have you know I can do this and I can do that, and I can run Office, you know, and all that stuff. I mean, there'll always be those people, but. I think the big deal with the iPad really is that it, you know, it accomplished that thing that Apple always claimed to do, but never really did, which was that computer for the rest of us. You know, it also came uh, out at the right time. Also, I mean, cloud computing was something yeah. that existed, and it was it was catching on at the oh, time yeah, yeah, that yeah, it came yeah. out. Yep. Can you imagine if this thing came out and you know things like Dropbox were not working as well? And, well and, by and, the way, when it when it first came out, my one of my many complaints about the iPad was that it didn't have enough storage and that they needed to offer more storage and that more storage was really important. They needed to have more storage. You know, more storage, more storage, more storage. You we know? need it. We need it. What and, do we? Uh, yeah. And then after a while, you realize like this is a really this is kind of an old fashioned PC management type thing to think about. It's it's so. What do you mean I can't store all 5,000 of my Billy Joel songs? Yes, I cannot go on the road without having my entire music collection and all of my movies on a device. You know? Every version of Piano Man ever written. Yeah. That's I mean, what I want. Um, yeah. I mean, so on this trip, you know, I rented a couple of movies um, and I, I I don't use an iPod. I mean, it was a, uh, on the, in this case, it was an Amazon Kindle Fire HD, like the big one. And, you know... I think this one has 16 gigs of storage. I bet it does. Um, it's not a lot of storage, but like how much stuff do you need? Like, I don't understand, you know, it's, yeah. it, it took me a couple of years to get over this, 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 again, it's kind of a, a PC centric way of thinking of it. We were so used to hard drives getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, I'll tell you, they uh, did Paul, I have I, on my Mac, on my Mac right now, my MacBook pro, I have a 256 gig hard drive SSD in yeah. there Yeah, yeah. on my main, on my pr- main production machine, which is here. The, I have a 256 SSD drive, and everything else is backed up on you know on a on a server. But I don't, you don't need large hard drives anymore. You really uh, no, but even but 100 256 is large. <laughs> I mean, days. yeah, but I, I mean, if you think about it, right, 256 yeah. uh, four years ago. So oh, are know, you crazy? 256? You need you need a terabyte. You need 500. I bet the gig. last the last hard drive I had in a computer that I actually used, like in a laptop, I should say. Was probably five hundred. No, I bet it was six hundred and forty. It could have been seven hundred something, but it was six hundred forty gigabytes. Let's say, you know. And and the thing that's weird about that is, right as that was happening, and it was probably some hybrid drive. I think it was a hybrid drive. You know, SSDs were coming out, obviously, and sixty-four gig was the standard at the time. Now it's one twenty-eight, and uh, you're talking about two fifty-six, and that's what I have on my desktop. But I have to say, you know, I'm not sure we're ever really going to hit that point on portable devices. I don't think we need it. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I, you know, eventually they will just go up, but I, I really. But have now they? That I've but been have using they, this way, They haven't hmm? really. They haven't gone up. No, they haven't. Eight gig, sixteen gig, thirty-two gig. Eight, sixteen, oh, thirty-two. Eight, sixteen. Every, I mean, but everywhere, right? Everywhere. Everything that you buy. I mean, you're well, getting you're the, getting a sixteen. The, the, the switch to these Retina class uh, displays has put bumped things up a bit. Um, you know, sixteen, I think, is the you know the base. I mean, we've got the thirty-two. 32, yeah. It's fascinating. I mean, it really is. And and I think a lot of things changed with this device. Uh, something like iTunes Match, for example, right? With iCloud. Um, well, my way, wife, exactly. No, my wife was that, downloading. That's exactly the point. Yeah, my, no, wi- be- my, my wife was storing all her MP3s on her iPhone. And she was like, oh, can you delete uh, some of this stuff? Because she, she, I didn't set it up for her. It was my mistake. Yeah. And she doesn't know. She's a yeah. she. She has a she has a, a, a doctor in education, but she doesn't know. Uh, so I, I I'm like, look, let me show you something. I hooked up the Bluetooth to her car, and I'm like, look, you see all these songs? She's like, yeah. Where did they come from? I'm like, these are all the songs that you could play right now. Every song that I have at home is now on this phone, and it's taking up zero space. Yeah. Well, uh, see, my wife would take this uh, in a different direction, which is. She does, and I don't mean a better direction. I mean, it's just, a, and again, a different way of looking at it. Um, I've spent many years like you curating this collection of music. My wife could not care less about this collection of music. You know, when she gets in a car, she has satellite radio as well, but on her phone, which she connects to her car, she listens to Pandora, you know? Yeah. And that's like radio. And, and again, there are people like us, and I, it's kind of a weird mentality. It's a PC mentality. We have to micromanage everything. You know, I would spend time like, you know, play, making these perfect playlists and, you know, making ID sure all the metadata is right and all that stuff, you know. 
And she's like, yeah, I just want to hear a playlist that's like uh, music that I, I like. And I don't care. I, I like that it's random, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, it's that kind of um, – those are different personality types on the one hand. But as you move toward cloud computing in some ways, you almost need to embrace that way of doing things. If you're really anal about everything, you're not going to be happy with cloud music ser- storage services and all that stuff. Um, you know, people who need to micromanage that stuff. I mean, we're going to be bred out of society, basically. If yeah. we're so old fashioned. But- I mean, nobody, our, our kids will never know what an ID three tag is. No, no. My brothers no. have no concept of this. My brother, I mean, they have tons of MP threes, and I was, I was <laughs> my, wiping it. My, my son's reaction to old technology is always so clear. Do you ever watch the So Archer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where he kind of like scoffs at things. He's like, he just. You know, it's like the uh, the dirigible episode where he's like, you know, like seriously, like like confronted by something like an album or an A-track tape or a cassette. You know, my son, who would literally have no idea what this thing was. And we've had this conversation where it's like, what do you think this thing is? And he looks at it and he's like, oh, this is ridiculous looking. What is this? It's, it's oh, unbelievable. You know, we, used to play, we played music on this. And when we wanted to go back to the previous song, we <laughs> we had to rewind it. And it would literally spool inside of there. And you could hear it. And then we, you, you would not know when to stop, so you'd have to test it again and again. And, and then listening to this, he would just look at you like you, you, you're insane. My brother's go, friend, <laughs> listen to this. My brother's <laughs> friend has a case, a, a pla- like, a, like a plastic case, like, like almost like an OtterBox case, protective case on his phone, that yes. makes his iPhone look like you know, a, 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 a Walkman, like the sure. old school Sony yellow Walkman. Yellow. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I'm looking at him, I'm like... I had one. Why would you want to do this? Do you remember? Do you know how miserable it was to have one of these things? I'm like, no, you don't, because you're 20. You've never used this. The, CDs um, were the worst. Yeah. Before they had the, the anti shock, you know, the anti skip thing. Yeah. I uh, let me think. I don't think I ever owned a portable. Is that true? I don't think I ever owned a portable CD player. I had one. The worst experience ever. You could only, I mean, nobody's walking around with a bunch of CDs. You had one CD in there, and that's all you would have for the day. Right. And every time you were sitting on the bus, it would skip. Awful. Ruined my childhood. <laughs> it's like an in-dash LP player. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, to kind of go back to the iPad, this yes, device, sorry. if it came out a year or two before, I do not feel that it would have been as successful. But, by the way, but it didn't. And it didn't, yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, it says something, but they were working although, on this thing for years. Some of the things that make it much more palatable today, like you were mentioning iTunes Match or iCloud or whatever, have occurred more recently. You know, that when the iPad first came out, you had to basically sync it to your PC. And so there was that kind of weird step if you wanted music and so forth. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, you're the right. Ability, the ability to, to have that stuff. I mean, they, obviously, Apple is very forward leaning. And so. You know, they, I'm sure they knew that this stuff was coming and that this was all going to get a lot better. And it happened very quickly. You know, iOS became a standalone kind of PC-free operating system. And the fact of the matter is this device would not have been successful. And I don't think the, the tablet market would have been successful at all if the original iPad had a really awful battery life. The thing that sure. sold this was that, oh, my God, I'm able to get yep. six, seven, eight hours on this thing. This is unbelievable. Ten hours. You know, Ten yeah. hours to stand, I mean, so, uh, when, I, when I go back and I look at my first uh, review of the original iPad, that was the one thing. You know, it's like a lot of negative stuff. And it was like, you know, the one thing you can't really dump on with this is the battery. Battery life is amazing. But a That's lot. Of, I mean, it's unbelievable how the market, the entire computing market has I remember has changed. that. I remember taking it on a trip and you, I watched a two-hour movie. And then I looked at the battery life, and I, you know, I don't remember exactly. But it was like eighty-three yeah. <laughs> percent. It was like really, you know, because I've I've owned computers where I could have watched that whole that exact movie, and it, I would not have made it through. I'll never forget it when I got when I got my iPad two. I was I guess like I was playing like whatever game for hours, and I was in bed, and and my wife's like, "Oh, you really like it?" And I looked at the battery life, and it was eighty-eight percent after playing for like five hours, and I go, "This is the effing future." Yep, I'm yep. in the future, and she's like, "What yep. are you talking about? Stop drinking!" <laughs> and then I, and then yeah. she turned around. And I went to bed, but I, it's exciting. I mean, I'm really, well, I'm excited the, by, the by other, technology. The other aspect of it, and I, I, and I just noticed this on um, uh, the Kindle Fire HD, you know, which obviously would never existed if it weren't for the yeah. iPad. Um, the quality of the displays are amazing. You know, the iPad has always had kind of, and these devices all the the Kindle Fire is a horrifically reflective display which i don't like but um the sheer the, but what they're designed for though is that kind of color 
uh, richness and the you know pixel density and all that stuff. And you watch an HD movie on there, and it looks amazing. Yeah. I mean, it looks amazing. It is uh, astonishing, like how the entertainment experiences on this thing work. And you know, I have a fairly powerful PC, but I could be watching an HD movie on a on a, a kind of a honking PC on the road. And the video will hitch a little bit sometimes, or the playback isn't great. But on these little devices, you know, iPads and the Kindle Fire HD, same thing. Um, HD movie plays great. It, it, it never stutter steps. Yeah. You know, it, it always just works. And that stuff is huge. And those are the kinds of experiences where someone plays a movie and says, wow, I have 83% battery life left when it's over. Or you watch a b- gorgeous HD movie. And there's no stuttering, no problems, no nothing. And after a while, you start to wonder, like, what, what am I using a traditional computer for again? You know, I mean, those it, days of downloading K Light and installing Codex so you could watch, you know, an MKV yeah, file yep. are are done. I mean, that doesn't exist I, anymore. Uh, on netbooks, one of the things I struggled with for a long time before finally giving up was trying to figure out like what combination of you know, playback apps and, you know, codecs and stuff was less, would allow this thing to yeah. actually play a movie without it stuttering all over the place. Amazing. And the answer is get a tablet. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's Paul, a big deal. It's unbelievable. And I want to talk about the Xbox with you and, and the controversy yeah. surrounding what happened a couple days ago. But before we do, I do want to talk about Audible. I okay. love Audible. Um, I, I, by the way, your pick, uh, that, that book a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah, which one? Um, Jesus Christ! I was about to <laughs> plug the book and I totally forgot the name. Uh, the, the one, oh God, I, I, and I, oh my God, and I listened to it the like the entirety, and Jessica loved it. Um, uh, the one about like how certain things stick with you. Oh, make it make uh, a stick. Make, there you go. Oh, I, I feel so awful. I couldn't remember it. Uh, I absolutely loved it, and Jessica loved it too. I thought it was a great pick, and then I downloaded another book. Um, you know, if I had if I had Audible here, I could tell you, but. Uh, I, I really like those kind of books when they make you think. They're like, you know, why why do we remember certain things like that? So I I, I want to thank you for that pick. It was really really good. Yeah. Uh, but Audible is sponsoring What the Tech today, and uh, they're giving you guys a free trial. Uh, they're really happy. They were saying how how responsive our audience is with Audible, and they're getting a lot of tweets from from everybody that that you know downloads the books, and they're saying, hey, I heard it on What the Tech, and Paul's pick was amazing. So I want to thank you guys for that. But if you go to audiblepodcast.com forward slash Andrew, you can sign up and get a free audiobook of your choice. You don't need, to, you know, no commitment needed. Uh, if you want to stick with them, that's great. If you don't, you got a free audiobook. Perfect. Um, I, I say it every week, and um, I really, this is one of those companies I don't have to sell to you guys, because everybody knows what Audible is, and everybody knows how good it is. And uh, Paul has another great pick for uh, us, and what is your pick, Paul? So this one's called Salt, Sugar, Fat. And it's a it's a fascinating book. I mean, it, unfortunately, there's no common sense advice in here for anyone who's trying to lose weight or anything like that. But it's it's more a kind of a background piece about how the food industry, especially in the United States, has perfected the art of creating. I almost want to call it pseudo food, but it it's food that is essentially addictive, right? It's the yeah. perfect combination of salt, sugar, and fat. You know, that it's got like a mouthfeel aspect to it. They're literally scientists in lab, labs concocting these chemical experiments that will become the next, you know, Dorito taco thing at Taco Bell or whatever because it is the perfect combination of flavors, um, textures, temperatures even, you know, things like that. And uh, that these foods are literally tr- actually addictive. Um, amazing combinations of food. And the thing that's, uh, the reason I read this book was there was an, uh, an excerpt uh, from it in the New York Times um, maybe a month or two ago. And it described this amazing meeting of all of the heads of the major food corporations in the United States, mm-hmm. you know, General Mills and, you know, I don't remember the other ones, but all those types of companies. They basically got together and they said, look, um, we know what we're, we're, we're responsible for the. Yeah. Uh, obesity epidemic in America. We're killing our own customers. We need to do something about this. We need not to be the tobacco industry. We need to get a- ahead of this and sell healthy food. And basically, one of the guys, I don't remember which guy, but one of the very influential CEOs of one of those companies said, you know what? If people want to buy healthy food, we'll sell it to them, but they don't. And we're they not listening to this. And they walked out. 
And that was the end of that. But the, these guys were actually on the, on the cusp of a, of a precipice, to mix my metaphors, where they were literally going to do the right thing. And then because of one guy, essentially, one company, it never kind of happened. And so this is a, a sort of an expose into the industry and, and, and uh, kind of falls into the same stuff like the, um, you know, how corn is evil and uh, all of our food is based on corn and all that kind of stuff. You know, the, um, it some is, of the other research. It is very on. interesting how we've it, everything has fillers in it now. And I'm, I don't want to, you know, get all preachy yeah. with the food stuff. But over the last couple of years, I've really got into eating I've, I've attempted to, but I've been researching uh, eating healthier and the whole uh, uh, how everything has so much gluten inside of it. And we're developing all these gluten allergies uh, right. because yeah. they're pumping things that normally don't have that much gluten. We're, we're adding so much more to it as, as a filler. So very interesting. Um, yeah. And, I'm I mean, and, and given all the news that's going on, like um, Michael Bloomberg and his attempts to curb you know horrible foods in new york and all that kind of stuff i mean it's 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 very interesting I, I do feel like we are moving toward a healthier food movement and that the big companies will uh go along but it is it's amazing the science that has gone into this stuff it's, i it's, watched it's just amazing. i watched an amazing thing on um on uh it was on the new york times website and this guy uh he's on youtube i i have his channel and I, i'll put it in the notes but he did this expose on like the the calorie, you know, the, the the nutritional facts and how many how much how many calories certain things have, and mm -hmm. that there's really no accurate way of judging it. Like the the FDA is saying, like, oh well, you got to put it, but we're not going to check if it's accurate or not. Like there's no there's no standard to follow. So a lot of these companies are putting out uh, wrong statistics, wrong facts for whatever's on their menu. So like one thing that they did was. In New York, there's these things called uh, yogurt muffins. I don't know if you've seen them, Paul. No. It's, it, I forgot the brand, but they're called yogurt muffins. And they're supposed to be low in fat. And the calories on this thing, so let's say it's like 200 calories. It actually had 580 calories in the muffin. And they, he did all the study and everything was off except for Subway. Subway actually adds more calories on their menu than the actual calorie intake of their meal, like a foot long. Uh, so they're actually <laughs> saying like, let's say it's like, they're saying yep. like 300 calories. It's actually 215 yeah, calories, yeah, yeah, yeah. which that's was great. amazing. I mean, it was, <clears throat> I still hate them by the way, but that's great. Subway. Yeah. You hate Subway. It's, it's bad. Is it Jared? You don't like them? <laughs> no, I just, I just have had an actual sub. So I know what it should taste like. Oh, okay. I, I, um, I actually, do you call them subs? I do. You do. Well, they're heroes here. Okay. Forget about hoagies. No, don't want to hear anybody a, say that's that. That's not even a food. That's a comic book character. Yeah, I don't want to hear a hoagie. Uh, Audiblepodcast.com <laughs> slash Andrew. Get your free audio book. Uh, Audible actually sent a, a message out to me. And they were saying, you know, we really like your Audible picks because they go on for like 10 minutes. And I, we actually forget that it's an ad. So yeah, um, oh, we, no, we like to have a conversation over it. That's why I like doing the ad because I actually use this stuff. So I, I somebody messaged me a couple of weeks ago and they go, well, how do I know you you got you actually like Audible and you use it? Mm -hmm. And I right. want to show you guys my Audible uh, list that's, here that's, of okay. you know what I actually use with Audible. So I share this with my wife. So it's the most bipolar sure. Audible pick ever. So I'm going to go down my list here. Um, uh, let's see. Lies that Chelsea Handler told me. Steve Jobs, part one and two. The yep. Skinny Girl's Rule, which is Bethany Frankel's uh, book. The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. Uh, all the parts. Uh, Unstuff Your Life. A Place of Yes, Bethany Frankel. Mm -hmm. The Out Outliers, my, my wife loves. The Andy Cohen uh, autobiography, Most Talkative and Made to Stick. So right. apparently, uh, if you go based on that, I love Bravo, the TV station. And I love Nazis because that's all yeah. I've learned. So all we've learned from this. So uh, audiblepodcast.com slash Andrew. Uh, get your free audiobook. And I want to thank Audible for supporting the show. Do you share, do you share yours with, uh, with your wife? Well, yeah. So uh, my wife and I share uh, a Kindle account. Okay. And we, you know, the Amazon bought Audible. So we, we combined that. And so we do share Audible as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you listening to one now? I am actually listening to the Third Reich right now as I'm doing yeah. the show. 
Uh, that's that's. I'm, not, that's, I'm, I'm never going to make this a pick because it's so old. But I'm I'm actually listening to the Da Vinci Code. Are you? It's a good book. Um, I want to talk about what happened with Xbox because. I, All right. So actually, I was on. I, I actually I go on Reddit a lot, and I guess I miss a story, and yeah. it turned out to be this huge thing, and people are going crazy. Xbox users they're saying. Why does why do we need to be connected all the time? Why does it require an internet connection? I'm thinking I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Would you make it a big deal if it was your computer? If if they were saying, well, your computer, you know, it's connected all the time, and that's a good thing. The, in a the way. problem is we don't understand what it means yet. And so, when you took off at the beginning there, and I was kind of staring, you know, deer eyed into the webcam, I someone asked about the Xbox stuff. And I wasn't sure if it was in the notes. Th- this happened right before I left. And so I, I didn't, I don't really have a, a huge understanding of what this guy said, but I've been asked a lot whether I knew about this or know anything about this internet connected thing. And I said, no. And um, when I was looking at the chat window earlier before we sh- started the show, I decided to go back and look at my notes and see what I've been told about this thing because I've been kind of eking out information over time. Um, and it turns out back in January, I, I did. <laughs> I did, in fact, receive this information. So let me tell you what I know. Okay. And by the way, there was a an apology issued by Microsoft. As there should be. But what I, I think what this guy did is ridiculous. Okay. That said, I feel like we are too quick to abuse people online, and especially on something like Reddit. Yeah. And um, I think that this guy was pounced on in a way that doesn't quite make a lot of sense to me, but whatever. Okay. So... Everyone knows that, um, or well, maybe not everyone knows, but the the next Xbox is codenamed Durango, right? And, and we had talked for, uh, for a while about this notion that there might be another version of the Xbox that was just aimed at uh, entertainment, a non-gaming device. Mm-hmm. That device was codenamed Yuma, and they're not making it. Um, they may make one in the future, but it's not happening this year. So the, uh, the new Xbox that comes out this year will just be the Xbox. And I, I mentioned before they're also going to sell a new Xbox 360 codenamed Stingray that will be $99. Um, you're, the new you're, Xbox... Wait a minute. You're, hmm. saying, you're saying when the new, when X, when the new Xbox is out, they're also going to sell a newer 360? Yep. Okay. And you might look at that as kind of a... Uh, as two things. Uh, backwards compatibility, obviously. Suggesting, and I don't actually know this for a fact, but based on the fact that they're making one, uh, I don't think that the new Xbox will play 360 games, but I, that I don't actually know. I'm just that, that, that I'm guessing. Um, but the other one is that you know, $99. That's a Roku price, and so we know that the Xbox 360 does Netflix, Hulu Plus, yada yada yada. I mean, you could make the argument that that's kind of a low cost um, entertainment device too. So you know, okay, um, Durango is going to be expensive. <laughs> you know, 500 yeah. bucks. $300 with a subscription, that kind of thing. But, you know, Blu-ray is true, blah, blah, blah. But the thing that interested me, I, I, I'm looking, going back and looking at some of the stuff I got a long time ago. Um, it actually says, must be internet connected to use. That's in the notes. And uh, I, that's all I have about it. It, it does say that, you know. So, um, But is that a bad thing? I don't know because I don't know what it means. You know, when you, when you look at some of the stories that were coming out this week about, you know, there was, I saw a headline that said something like X next Xbox could, you know, be okay without an internet connection for as long as three minutes or something like that. Like I, I don't even know what that means. And so for me, Xbox 360 is almost entirely an online experience. Most of the games I play are multiplayer, where you're playing against other people online, or you're using it as an entertainment device when you're connected to a service like Netflix or Xbox Video or whatever. So that is an internet-connected device. Uh, when you, it, in this phrase, this way, it says, must be internet-connected to use. Um, you know, that suggests that you couldn't even boot into the UI and, I don't know, play a local. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have one. I don't know. We don't know what exactly it means. It just don't means that, that it means. needs it. I mean, maybe no, it needs something for an authentication for the game. I mean, maybe, maybe that that's what they mean by this. I mean, that that's a possibility. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. That's a, that's, I mean, I'm just telling you what I know. I don't, I don't know. That I don't know. You know, um, originally they were going to announce this thing in April, April 24th. Um, now they're going to announce it May twenty, you know, May twenty first. Um, we know that there are events occurring this year. 
where we're going to learn more about Durango. Right? And it's, it's a fourth quarter uh, release, right? Early November, yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, E3 is going to occur. Uh, Build is going to occur in San Francisco in uh, June when they're going to talk about the developer story because it's a, it's a Windows 8 device. It's going to have the same or basically the same uh, developer tools and developer APIs and all that kind of stuff. And so I think there's a lot of um, information to come. But I, I, the way I, lo I look at all the stuff that I've seen about Durango and I think it's all – positive like i don't mm -hmm. see any i don't really see any bad news here at all like to me everything i've seen about this is really positive and it's amazing to me that with, with based on like no information at all everyone is like freaking out about everything with this thing i think i think it you, also it comes you know what down the to number one aside from this online yeah. thing by the way the number one concern the number one question i've gotten from people is what does it look like who gives a shit what it looks like? What are you talking about? What does that have to do with anything? You want it to work or, well. I've yeah. actually heard from, and by the way, not one or two people, several people who have said, based on what I've seen, Sony is going to blow them away. Based on what you've seen. We didn't see anything from Sony, yeah. What are you talking about? Well, no, but you've seen literally nothing from Microsoft. But I, I don't know? think that's even a possibility considering how, how many people use Xbox Live. I mean, yeah. and how, and, and by the way, you are now in the ecosystem. I mean, we're not talking about people that are jumping ship. You're not going to have this mass exodus of, of, of users of Xbox Live jumping to Sony. I, I, that, that it's becoming harder and harder for that to happen because you're so involved Honestly, and committed. The bigger problem they have is not, the, the problem Microsoft has has nothing to do with Sony, right? It, it's, it, it, or Nintendo anymore. It's um, I don't think anybody Roku has a problem with and that. Apple TV and yeah. you know it, this the the market for kind of hardcore video games the the market of people who will always buy the next you know Gears of War game the next Halo game the next Call of Duty game uh, is fairly finite it, it's a decent market you know yada 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 but it it's not a it's not it's not the market for tablets it's not the market for smartphones it's not the market for PCs I think if they if they market this thing more of a consumption device than a gaming platform, right? Uh, and, and that's really what it's become, but still the it's, Xbox it, it, name yes. represents right. gaming. And actually, I, I, I don't know this. And again, I want to be really clear about you know, my, what I'm speculating about and, and what I do know to be true. My guess is that the reason they're not doing this separate entertainment device is because they didn't want to confuse the market and they wanted to just go out and say, this is the one thing that does it all, you know? The, the problem they have is it's, got, you know, like when the Sony uh, PlayStation 3 came out, same thing. A very expensive device at launch. Um, they're always going to be the hardcore gamer types of fanboys who are going to buy anything that, uh, that they release. And, but they need to have an, a way to um, go after the mass market. The mass market's not going to spend 500 bucks on a, on a device that sits in your living room. You yeah, know, they're just not going and, to. And, and by the way, let me be clear. Gaming is a form of consumption, but I don't feel that uh, no, to, be, just, to be to be to be selling as a consumption device, you have to do far more than just put need, a CD in and play a game. It's not. It's it, it's not. It's, one, it's hardcore gaming versus yeah. gaming. I mean, uh, the 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 market for Facebook games and little mobile games is billions. The market for you know first person shooters and people are going to sit with a hand controller in their hands in front of an HD TV at night is millions. You listen know. for me, uh, and I'll tell you this when when they announce. The uh, the first Windows Phone, they were really focusing on Xbox. Do you remember that with with the the way that they were doing it? They were saying like, well, it's integrated in Xbox, and and they kept using the uh, word Xbox. And I got turned off as someone that is not a gamer. I didn't see it that way. I I I I saw it more as they were integrating with all of their important IP. So to me, the Windows Phone was Office, SkyDrive, Xbox at the time, Zune, right? All of their important properties that made sense to have on the phone. The confusing thing about Windows Phone to me was that, because we didn't know about Windows 8, yeah, was uh, that this wasn't Windows. Why are they calling this Windows? I, I don't know. I, I'm really, I really think that the next version of the Xbox, whatever they call it, the Xbox Surface, mm -hmm. whatever it is, has to be 
the the primary focus for your house. I mean, it, it should have. Yes. I yep. mean that 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 is going to be their selling point, and that is how they're yeah, going to break out of this gaming platform. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I swear to God, you know, whether it's email on Twitter, or whatever, it amazes me the negativity that I see out of people. Like, I don't. But why don't people want that? I don't understand I don't, that. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's this whole thing like you're taking our thing and making it for everybody? I mean, I think a lot of people also suffer no, from no, that. No, no, no. My, my point is that it's never right. You know, like in other words, everyone always wants something else. You know, people will say, uh, I look at the Xbox today and I think, you know, aside from performance issues, whatever, um, that it's a good combination of things. You know, that it it it, it is uh, the right combination of online services that provide, you know, video and music and entertainment and that kind of thing. But other people will look at this and say, yeah, but what I want is a DVR that integrates with my cable system and does this and has, you know, I want all those wires and IR blasting and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, no, it's, 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 stop. That, 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 is, that is such a minuscule market. That is not the future of entertainment. That's the past of entertainment, you know. And uh, people really get caught up in, um, you know, very specific things. It's like the the way that we didn't get the iPad when it came out of, you yeah. know, they're, they're, you know, it's never going to do everything like uh, this thing right this week. So right now, for whatever reason, the slice in time this week, people are freaking out. This guy got on Reddit and, you know, made an ass out of himself or didn't, whatever he did. I mean, I, you know, I don't agree with it totally, but, um, people are freaking out. Like, are you going to be online? You know, and then that's when you start hearing from people like, Oh, I live in a, you know, I live in a place where I have to pay for bandwidth, and blah, you know, it doesn't mean that it's like chugging down gigabits of yeah. data every 10 seconds. It might just mean it needs a heartbeat to to do something. We don't know what it means, you know? Yeah. So we're going to find out. I, I, yeah. Um, you know, what were we talking about pay-per-view the last time we were doing the show? I, I think, think I was so, talking, yeah. about, talking to you about it and how outdated yeah. and archaic it is and how, how come these companies have not come up with a good solution for this. Uh, sure. And I brought up the WWE, and I said how it, think of the think of what they're doing and what they're attempting to do. They're trying to create yeah. a television network now in a world where everything is online. Why can't they do it online? And their their focus is pay per view. They announced that they they have an app for Xbox, and you could order the pay per views on the Xbox now. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what? That it is, is IP a, based, you know, yeah. uh, at least on, on my cable system. I mean, um, but I think that is a that is the future of this device. That will be the future where you consume all your content. I wish my on this Xbox thing. could be my set top box in a way, right? It would uh, be great. It's like, pretty. Yeah. Nice well, UI. I, right. Right. That was something Microsoft had gotten right a long time ago. The UI stuff. I mean, if you go back to the the Media Center stuff and their guide UI and all that, really, really, really well done. Um, and you know, for whatever reason, I think for some legacy, old-fashioned, <laughs> you know, bad vibes stuff from the past, cable companies didn't want to work for Microsoft, and they really could have helped themselves out a lot if they had just done it. Um, I think, it's I, too bad. I, I think that that's kind of changing now. I mean, Verizon's on there. Time Warner's now on uh, the Roku. I think these cable companies are realizing, well, it doesn't matter. We have an uphill battle because people are getting the same content everywhere else except for our television. We're sure. we're going to start losing market share when it comes to this. So. I think this is a great thing that they're doing. It they might be finally waking up and just saying, you know what, we don't care how you're getting our data as uh, our content as long as you're paying us. That's all that matters. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I this is the dumb pipe argument. You know, um, for some reason, it's awful for cable companies and also for wireless carriers, right? To to be a dumb pipe, uh, which I don't understand because you're getting a monthly subscription fee. I mean, uh, just enjoy it and take it. You know, don't worry about it. Why, why would you care? If someone was using a TiVo or an Xbox 360 as the front end to grab content but, but from again, you, I mean, you're why, getting the check regardless. Perfect example. Why can't the cable company say, okay, you know what? Here, here's the thing. You're paying five dollars a month for this piece of garbage, you know, cable box. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you pay five dollars or ten dollars a month and get an Xbox and put it in every room? And they'll they'll start selling it. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 stupid because they're gonna they, you're gonna end up paying more. But I guarantee people will do that. People will go and pay monthly five ten dollars a month, get an Xbox, and use that as a cable provider. Right. It's a it's a weird time we're living in. I, I I feel like this is the one thing that has not caught up to everything else. You know, the way that we're getting cable television has has definitely not caught up to what's happening. 
And I've always been pretty positive about, the, about this. And I'm thinking, well, in a couple more years, I'll just be able to watch everything on my computer and, you know, type in my Verizon password. And there you go. I just watch it on whatever device I want to watch it on. But that's still not the case. We're getting there. Almost. Almost there, Paul. There. Almost there. All right. We got to wrap it up. Are you going to go back to bed? <laughs> I cannot. I'm not going go to try to stay up so I can get on, get on a normal schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Paul. Uh, of course, go to Paul's website, winsupersite.com, for all your uh, Paul Therott needs. And uh, I think we're back to <laughs> yeah. our regular schedule yep. starting uh, next week. Should be at yeah. least through May. We so should be good. Next week is Unless the 9th. Yep. I'll be, I'll, we'll be here. Everything will be normal. 16th, everything will be normal. The 23rd, I will be... Oh, I'm going to be uh, in Los Angeles, but I have a studio there, so I'll be wouldn't affect anybody i'll just be in a whole different location okay um how dare you change things up i'm like sorry this? i'm sorry Who do you think you are i i have important stuff i'm an important person now i'm going to los angeles for nonsense just <laughs> to have fun uh ask paul what he's wearing in the window in the office garage video what are you wearing yeah, i posted a picture of it on facebook what do you, what are you wearing uh it's a skydiving outfit Oh, that's why Mary Jo said, are you going to be wearing a skydiving outfit today? Right. Because I wrote, things are going to get weird. I'm going to talk about my love for Blackberry. <laughs> and she goes, yeah. are you going to be wearing a skydiving outfit? And I said, I don't know what she's talking about. Yeah. So, I don't know. Of course, if you miss any portion of the show, you could go to our website, gfknetwork.com, and catch it there. We archive everything within a couple hours. And uh, definitely subscribe to the show, guys. If you're watching live, I encourage you, or if you're listening to the podcast, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Because it helps us out and uh, it's automated. So you get the show whenever we release it. And uh, we'll see you all next week, guys, on What the Tech. Good night, everybody.